more than 33,000 people have already been laid off this year by top IT firms. In this video, I'll help you transform this financial challenge into an opportunity for personal and professional development. But do brace yourself, at the end of this video, you might end up craving for a well-deserved break. Let's start by getting rid of the term layoff itself first. This term was coined perhaps by media a decade back to sensationalize large-scale reduction of workforces, specifically by IT firms. Let's try and use a more appropriate term called separation, where separation could be initiated by the employee or the employer. The idea is that either employee has better options or employer no longer wants the services of the employee. Reasons could be any. Most turbulent times have three outcomes. First being that your company is doing fine and there is no risk for the company and its employees. The second one being your company is not doing so well and about 10, 15, 20% employees could be at risk. Third one being you are in those 10, 15, 20% employees. Do remember the fact that motivation for a separation need not be performance. It could also be office politics, it could be a normal curve where to make someone else win, you might be the sacrifice pawn. This is not a time to be overconfident. Let me walk you through some best practices that do not require any preparation, you can do them right away. First one being avoid purchases on forward EMIs basically means don't spend the money you don't have. There could be a case where you have a zero cost EMI. Keep aside the money you have right now in a different account. Don't spend it. Pay your bills from that account. Second one is related to stock markets. Don't take long term speculative or FNO positions where you could lose more money than you have put as of now. Idea is that markets are at an all time high. If you need the money, you don't want the markets down by 20-30% at that time. If you are sitting on some profits in some positions, you may want to book partial profits. Yes, the stock market or your stock could go up to any extent. However, if you are anticipating trouble, then best to have some cash in hand. If your targets have been met, maybe liquidate the entire position. Pay your advance taxes. You are supposed to pay advance taxes by 15th of the last month of every quarter in any case. If you haven't done it, then at the time of filing your taxes, you may end up with a large liability, which will include penalty and interest. If you are sitting on any equity, which is like a bad decision, it is very rare today to have a wrong position where you are in losses. But still, if you are on an underperforming stock, something that you made a mistake on, don't sit on losses or bad positions. Book your loss, rescue your capital, get out of that position. There's a term called tax harvesting. If you don't know it, then let me know. I'll create a video on it. But this is a good time to do tax harvesting. Six one is a no brainer. Not the best time to upgrade your house or buy a new car. If you are in rental, please continue till the times become certain. This is a phenomena which repeats every year, every two years. Wait for times to stabilize evaluate your reserves and your risk appetite car definitely wait for some time and then upgrade especially not the second or third car or upgrade of something you already have so let's talk about the four key category of expenses which are zero compromise whether there's a paycheck coming or not home loans so if you are living in a home which is on emi you should have bare minimum three emis as a reserve they should go up to 6 and 12 months gradually as you accumulate wealth and have more money in your hand. If you have a rental property, then at least 3 months, again, 6 months is comfortable because if you lose a tenant, you might be without rent for some time and you might be banking on the cash flow. Vehicle loans, 3 months is the bare minimum and 6 months is comfortable or ideal for even a vehicle loan. For vehicle loans, if you are buying a new vehicle right now, this is not a good time to use company lease. School fees, at the minimum, this year's fees should be in reserves. Ideally, next complete year, which is plus 10% of this year, should be in your reserves to feel comfortable. Fees are absolute zero compromise. Living expenses, the bare minimum ones, 3 months, 6 months, 12 months, same formula. These should be available with you at the least. 
the lifestyle you have made your family used to that has to be maintained you can't go down upon it so that money needs to be in your hand now once we have the money how do we park it because this is not a money to be kept in mutual funds real estate or stocks for the simple reason you will need this money regularly and these instruments may be kind of stuck somewhere the markets may be down you might not be able to sell or may have to sell at significant loss so where do we park this money that is what we will discuss in the following section if you have watched my previous videos you already know my favorite topic passive income there are four key categories of passive income that i usually talk about bonds fds which are not an investment dividend yield stocks and income from rentals your sources could be different also passive income is more than useful when your paycheck may be under threat how to manage the money for your reserves i'll talk about five best practices which i have created for myself the first three may be new to you i call the first one a bond cycle so any amount you can spare 10000 50000 1 lakh in a month you create a cycle of it which means more or less every month you invest one unit the 10000 50000 1 lakh which i mentioned every month systematically into a bond some month you might invite buy two units some month you may not buy anything if a new issue is not available idea is that you build a reserve first for 6 months then for 12 months eventually for 24 months bonds typically the reasonable nbfc ones are around 10 11% pre tax now besides the cash flow if you end up into turbulent times what happens is every 12 months 15 months in some bonds the payout of principal also is quarterly uh, apportioned so you will continuously also get your principal back think of it in a general case there is a cycle every month you have created for 24 months now every month you will get passive income also every month you will get the principal of the first bond back to either reinvest or consume this gives you a cushion or safeguard for 24 months if you have created a 24 month cycle for me personally i have right now created a 24 month cycle already now this may not mean every month second one is something that i haven't perfected yet but i am working on it so think of it suppose your monthly expenses household expenses are 25000 rupees a month so think of a very high quality stock which grows reasonably well pre split let's assume nestle this is not an investment advice nestle was around 25000 so if you have bought six nestles in your account and if you end up into a turbulent situation every month you can sell off one nestle stock and get 25k this 25k will grow with the stock market speed inflation typically nestle kind of stocks grow faster with a cagr of 12 15 14 so your money will be not eaten by inflation also hopefully so this is a unique idea which i am trying to create this is not for cash flow but idea is you sell the stock every month one stock now nestle has split into 1 is to 10 ratio so you could treat treat 10 units of nestle as one unit so instead of buying 6 nestle you need to buy 60 nestle the money you need to spend will be same third one i have talked in my gold video also my personal philosophy is you should have 24 months worth of fixed expenses in gold now if you have just started your career in your mid uh, 20s early 30s this may sound like a phenomenal task don't worry about it this is something that you should plan towards over the years maybe 40 50 55 this will also help with retirement planning so if your monthly expense is 50000 24 into 50000 12 lakh is the amount of gold you should have new sgb tranche is coming very soon and sgb is the preferred instrument for me to accumulate gold your instruments could be jewelry or digital gold but they all incur gst your choice fourth one is dividend yield stocks the pe part of the stock you are buying is important about 1 one and a half year back there were phenomenal stocks available giving fantastic dividend yield today most of those stocks have become 2x 3x some of in some cases 4x also maybe not the best time to buy in bulk you could start accumulating but wait for a fall if it happens wait for some correction some stabilization some consolidation right now if you put bulk money into dividend yield stocks you might take 4 5 years to settle down with that expense and get a reasonable dividend yield out of it 
somewhere between 5 to 10 percent dividend yield is ideal from a stock it grows over time make sure you buy stocks that will be around for 10 20 years some emergency money liquid should be in fixed deposits so it could be three months or four months worth of expenses for you so if all four categories i talked about to come up to say one lakh a month and maybe two three lakh four lakh worth in liquid fixed deposit that you can break and take out any time ideally i have talked about it in previous videos you should have an overdraft but if you are not getting a paycheck i would advise not going for an overdraft use the fixed deposit overdrafts will require you to pay an interest every month in excess of the fd return and there is a difference of taxation between the two also Here's a very liberating idea. What about a meaningful vacation? Most of us have a bucket list of places we want to visit, but we never have time. Now, if you have time on hand, or if you might have time in hand, suddenly our risk appetite stops us from going on a vacation. We tend to stay at home, save the money. Keep aside some money for vacation if you possibly can in the bigger plan. So think of it like a one reasonably large vacation, not necessarily international, two or three small trips. These are not probably the times to use your money for expensive hotels. Maybe a BNB which is comfortable, safe, hygienic may do. Maybe travel by train locally instead of plane. Train journeys may be a great experience for your kids also. There may be a time where you want to visit a place, but your spouse may not have holidays or your kids may have exams and schools. If they are okay, then go on a solo trip. This is a suggestion for spouses and kids if they are watching this video. If your better half of your parent is going through these times, support them, encourage them in going on a solo trip. One bonus tip, this is something on my list today also. Recently, I posted a video about a loss in a tea stock. One of my next vacations, I want to visit Darjeeling or some other place where tea is grown. I want to understand the business better to know where I went wrong. So you could basically visit places which can also help in understanding certain businesses local to those locations which can help you in your stock market journey also just for an example sake i went to dubai last year that is when i learned first time in my life that dubai does not have oil most of the oil is in abu dhabi this video was about preparation in the next video we'll talk about the possible situation what to do if you have ended up with a separation how to handle it well, enjoy that time and make it enriching for your long term career.